He's got all the attributes to really be a, maybe the next big thing. You can even say he's kind of changed Portuguese football. Just look at his record. He's just almost been a bit of a miracle worker. It wouldn't be a huge surprise if uh, Liverpool or a similar size club came in for Amarim if he accepted it. So welcome back to This Is Anfield. And today we're joined by Tom Kundert. And we're going to be talking about Ruben Amarim, who is one of the favourites to take the Liverpool job in the summer. He's been absolutely brilliant since he's been at Sporting. You cannot really uh, kind of overstate the impact which he's had. And he's done it now over quite a sustained period of time. You know, he when he was appointed a uh, Sporting coach four years ago, uh, in his first full season, Sporting were champions. That was the first time Sporting had won the championship in Portugal for 19 years. Uh, you know, completely dominated by Benfica and Porto. Uh, and since then, you know, he's kept up the performance level. Sporting were quite close to winning the championship season after. Last season, not quite so uh, successful. This season, they've been brilliant again, arguably playing the best football they have since Amarine has been has been uh, appointed. You know, they're, they're looking very strong and with a very good chance of winning the championship again this season. As a player, he was kind of known as a bit of a joker, but obviously respected as well. Is he more of a man manager or a tactician, would you say? Or got a bit of both? Yeah, I think he's got a bit of both. Yeah, but I'd say definitely his strong suit is his man management. You know, really good at creating, uh, you know, a good atmosphere and under squad, uh, a really good spirit of togetherness. He did that even in his short time at Braga before he came to, to sporting. And at sporting, that's really been one of his... One of the keys to his success, without doubt, you know, he's, uh, he's one of these managers in, what, four or five years now, he's been, uh, you know, a manager in Portugal. I've never heard him criticise any of his players directly, uh, but also, you know, without doubt, he's, he's pretty astute tactically. How does Amarim set his teams up generally? Completely convinced in his way of playing and uh, doesn't change it at all, which is a 3-4-3. Three, three. So, uh, you know, three-man back line. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Some people look at that tactic as a bit of a defensive tactic offered because, you know, the wing-backs, if they drop back, you're really talking about five defenders. But it can be used as, uh, you know, and I'd say that was definitely the case, Sporting's title-winning season. You know, they, they had such a strong defence that was really the key to winning the championship that season. But it can also be a very offensive system, such as this season, where Sporting are just scoring goals for fun. They've scored more goals in the league this season uh, since the 1950s, you know, or 1960s. They're just absolutely tearing it up. But the, the wing backs very offensive in this system. If ever there's a an injury or a red card during a game. Uh, even if that happens, Amarine never abdicates from his free at the back. And then uh, building from there, there's a few nuances when it comes to the attack. You know, it's uh, usually played with two wide players playing between the lines, but sometimes this season he's gone for a bit more of a traditional front two. If you were to put your neutral hat on, if you were Amarim's agent and he wanted a move to Liverpool, how would you pitch your manager to Liverpool. Just look at his record. He's just almost been a bit of a miracle worker. You can even say he's kind of changed Portuguese football a little bit because, of course, traditionally Portugal is known for the big three clubs, Benfica, Porto and Sporting. But to be honest, it had been almost turning into the big two because Sporting were just really so far behind uh, their rivals, even in terms of you know, budget especially. I think that sign of a great coach is really to get the most out of the players they have to work with. And you look at the players that Amarine has worked with and their productivity, and it's super, really, all of them playing at the top of their game, all of them playing better than they've ever played. You kind of wonder if he's given, like, prime talent, like a, a club like Liverpool. You kind of wonder what he could achieve. Uh, you know, I think he, he's got all the attributes to, to really be a, uh, maybe the next big thing, if he already isn't the next big thing in Portuguese coaching. 
do you think he would move to Liverpool or has he got um, a project at sport and he's happy with? You know, he's an ambitious coach, without a doubt, he's an, he's an ambitious coach. And Portugal's place in the football food chain, you know, it's almost inevitable when a player starts hitting the headlines, when a coach starts doing well, uh, that a move abroad is probably the next logical step. I suppose the question is when, you know, it's Sporting doing very well again this season. Like I say, a very good chance of winning the championship. If they do win, they go into the Champions League next season. Uh, maybe that would persuade him to, to stay at Sporting for one more year. It may also depend on how many players Sporting sell this summer because I'd say there's four or five players in that team who are destined for top careers. But then again, you know, if someone like Liverpool come in for him, how many times is that offer going to come? So, yeah, it wouldn't be a huge surprise if uh, if Liverpool or a similar-sized club came in for Amarine, if he accepted it.